Hello, everybody. My ear is itchy. Um, I just finished taking my summer class. I just had my final in it, and it was about the philosophical and psychological perspectives of happiness. And so I'm going to share with you what I learned about the science of happiness and what is literally scientifically proven to make you a happier person. Um, overall, the evidence shows that happiness is based off of 50% of your genetic set point. So everyone is born with a different genetic set point. This is like similar to like hunger levels or not hunger levels, but like your body weight. So everyone has a certain like set point of body weight. You tend to fluctuate about 10 pounds around that. So this is kind of the same with um, happiness. You are born with a certain set point of happiness, but you do not have to stay at that point. Um, the next 10% that affects your happiness is your external environment, so the circumstances you were born in and whatnot. And then 40% is in your power to make yourself happy. So um, this is based off of empirical evidence um, by m very many psychological experiments and whatnot to see what truly makes a person happy. So I'm going to be referring to my notes um, and also recommending you some books to, well, the books that I had to read in class that kind of showed this information. So The How of Happiness is by Sonia Lubomirsky or whatever. And um, it's called this a scientific approach to getting the life you want. So this discusses all the different things that do make you happy and how to do them and whatnot. So these are different activities and different, I don't know, just complete information about how to be happy based on scientific evidence. Um, basically, I will discuss a few major ones that I have found in my life to make me happy. Um, these are things like meditation and practicing gratitude. Practicing gratitude really boosts your happiness. It boosts your self-image and also the image of that you perceive with other people. By being gra gracious, you increase your productivity, your health, your good behavior, and your coping. Um, it's really just, it's a way to help you become more optimistic and have more of a positive lifestyle. Um, kindness is something that I've also found to increase my happiness and is scientifically proven that it does increase happiness. Um, this not only helps your view of other people, it makes you find the world to be more of a giving, compassionate type person, but also within yourself you have a greater self-worth because you recognize that you are a good person and it really helps you in a lot of ways. Um, other things that really help are having goals. So this is something that I guess I'm just explaining the things that have helped me that I've found the empirical data to. But having goals, writing them out is really good and making sure they're very precise, specific, concrete. So like not just I'm going to eat healthy, gonna, you're going to write every day I'm going to try and eat a vegetarian meal or every day I'm going to eat more vegetables but like even more concrete than that so like every day I'm gonna eat veggies as a side for every single meal so these are very concrete goals they're realistic they're achievable they're timed you know what it is and what you want and getting there is easier because you have the steps and you pre-commit to them and this will help you to become happier um, using your personal strengths like is something that also is leads to happiness so getting lost in 
this is something called flow so it's kind of getting lost in the sauce so you just for me like say painting like I will paint and I will not recall the time I do not know anything else I'm not distracted by anything I'm just in a flow of painting and that really helps people to become more creative and in with themselves and whatnot um, living in the present moment and also enjoying the little things is really important so recognizing the little things enjoying them living in the happiness of in the now instead of looking towards the future it's great to be optimistic about the future but living in the now is really important even if you're having a hard time you can look at the positives a lot of pain and suffering leads to exponential growth and bettering of oneself um, Martin Seligman is kind of the creator of positive psychology. He has amazing TED Talks, which I would completely, totally, 100% recommend if you want more information on this. But he talks about something called PERMA, P-E-R-M-A, which is his key to happiness, or his steps to happiness in a way. So this is positive emotions, generally, engagement, which is like the flow that I just talked about, and then relationships, which are seen to be a key component of happiness. That is intimate, romantic, any sort of relationship, as long as they're good and solid and productive for you and empowering for you, that is a really key part to happiness. And then meaning, so having meaning in life, finding your meaning, etc. A lot of people find this through faith. Um, others, like myself, find it through a certain skill that they have. and then A is achievement, and this is something that can happen by setting your goals, achieving those goals, and whatnot. Um, I know this was kind of brief and quick, but I just wanted to share with you a little bit what I learned and what has been backed by scientific evidence as a lifestyle that I have. I don't know, I just really enjoyed this class because it kind of solidified in me and reassured me that what I was doing is actually the best for my own happiness and that I don't know it's just quite beautiful to see that being a selfless giving gracious kind person is truly the key to happiness and I hope you benefit from this I hope you read the book I suggested there's so many books out there that help you to find happiness and watch all the TED Talks by Martin Seligman as well as any other happiness TED Talks because everyone is different so everyone's happiness is benefited by different things but these are the ones that are scientifically proven across all to help happiness.